more than all, as the weather's poor and I can't get to sea and I don't really want to be fishing on the beach when it's raining horrible and cold, so I thought I'd get a few jobs done. Well, this is a Hydroslave 8 inch line hauler, hydraulically powered. When you first buy them, they've got a fixed knife. Well, they are designed as a line hauler and that's perfectly fine, but I don't want to use it for line hauls, I want to use it for long lines. Basically, three mil bits of rope with a hook and snud every 10 foot. So I've got to take that knife off and convert it to a floating knife bottle eject these hooks out of the sheaves. This knife actually fit quite tight. I did whittle it down myself with a flapper disc to get it that tight, but they still won't work with long lines. If you get a hook in there and that'll jam it solid, and you just can't get it out without unbolting the knife, well that ain't no good. A floating knife, you just flick out the way, and then clear it, and then start off again. You don't want to be playing around with spanners at sea and piddling about, it's just too much effort. This is actually a brand new hauling head, alright it's got a bit of rust but I'll put a bit of grease on, but I sat in the shed for probably five years, like a lot of things do, and I get put back to the back burner. But it's ideal on a day like this, to actually pull my finger out and actually get something done. So here we go. Well as I've previously ground down these edges to make it fit very tight to the wheels, I can then use that as a template to make my floating knife. That's made it a lot easier really. So first thing I'll do is unbolt this and then I'll draw around it to make a template. Well that's all drawn round now. I'll get a pair of scissors and I'll cut that shape out. Then I'll put it on a bit of stainless. I've just got a bit, a small bit of stainless sheet. That's about two mil thick. It doesn't sound very thick, but that's plenty strong enough for what I want. So I'll just put my finger on it. And just overlap the edges. And draw on it. I look a bit awkward because I've got a tripod in the way so I'm trying to do it behind a tripod and that is my template I ain't got to be that accurate because you've got to fettle it into shape afterwards to get a really tight fit to cut the stainless I'm just going to use a one mil thick slitting disc and a little four and a half inch grinder I'm not going to get it that accurate but I'm just going to cut it out roughly Well, I now cut it out with a slitting disc and then shaped it with a flapper disc. So I took off the sharp edges, so it's now roughly the right sort of shape. I'm just holding it in the sheaves to get a rough size. That looked pretty good to me. That looked worse than what it is due to the bevel I put on the edges with a flapper disc to take the sharp edges off. But remember, this would be a counterbalanced knife. So that will wear in but I'm happy with that fit that fit lovely to make the counterbalance for the sheath or well for the knife I'm just going to cut a couple of strips of stainless I'll do them the width of the rule make it easier that's probably about an inch wide that's plenty good enough for what I want just one strip that should be enough sort of thing cut that off so if you look at the hole and head you've got the round sheaves well obviously the boss in the middle and you've got the cast outside well I want that knife to come off at an angle I don't want it square I want it to guide out so I want it at a slight angle if you look on there, I've got a cup, got several holes to work from the old knife holes, so I might as well use that knife hole look about right. So what I'll do, I'll use that knife hole there, there's in two holes. What tally up with that? So I want a knife to come down there, a bar coming off it, 
put an angle in it and put a counterbalance weight there. So that basically, that's the knife. Teeter off or counterbalance weights that'll go around that pivot point. So that'll flap in and out of the sheath. Well, I've got a bit of stainless round bar, about 50 mil. I reckon 30 mil of this will be enough for a counterbalance. So I'll just mark it off and I'll cut it through with a four and a half inch grinder. I ain't got a proper workshop when you got his weld and a few hand tools. So I ain't got the luxury of a band saw to cut it off with, but I'll soon do it, that'll be fine. Well, I've now made the, the arm up, welded it on, obviously put a set in it, welded the counterbalance, and I drilled out a stainless nut, or two, and just welded them on. So now, that's the arm. I might have to nip a little bit out of here and change the angle slightly, because the angle didn't look quite right to me, but as a prototype and you just got to try it. When you want to set it up, obviously you want to set your pivot point and get it in the right place. Well, if you measure, you can't see it very well on here. The centre of the sheath is about 30 mil. So if you look here, I'll put two nuts under it and spaced it out. And that's bang on 30 mil. Obviously, the two central nuts are just to pivot and the other two nuts are just to lock it against the back plate and lock that nut there so it can't move well that's all bolted in if you look at it that's in the, that counterbalance is enough if you don't want too much weight or that'll dig in the only issue is that angle has basically going 90 degrees to that central boss well i wanted to go a bit more so i'm just going to have to nip out a bit out of that bar to get it right but that fit lovely in there i don't know how well you can see this because the light in the best but obviously that's a, that counterbalance and find this old on center with the shape of it and if you spin it obviously these wheels in 100 percent true and all that's doing is Scraping off the high spots of paint, so that's nice and tight in there. I wouldn't have a problem with that with hooks getting stuck. If you do, all you got to do is pull it out of the way. So it's quite a bit of force. So you don't need that much counterbalance weight. I've seen people use springs, but springs rust, rust and break. But that bit of round bar in, so that's lovely. That is. That'll work a treat, especially when it bed in a bit. Well, I'll just give it a good looking over and it weren't quite right when I looked at the knife that was virtually like square to the wheel well, I don't want it square because obviously when the lines come round they're hitting it dead on I want to like lead them out like that so they come round and get ejected so I just cut it put a set in it and welded it up again so now that fit now that will fit roughly like that, the line will come round and get guided off. That's a lot better that is. And obviously the counterbalance is horizontal, so it's got full load. But that's a lovely angle to eject the knives at, or eject the line hooks at. That's perfect, I'm happy with that. Well that's the finished article from the front. That's the counterbalance. Bit that much weight to lift it up but there's enough weight to get a bit of leverage through that pivot point and there's there's quite a bit of weight there but not too much if you give it too much it'll just dig in all the time but that's a good couple of hours spent all done and dusted and hopefully there'll be a bit of lion fish in the future to catch but i'm not gonna hold my breath well thanks for watching anyway if you'd like and subscribe that'd be very much appreciated thank you bye